a world where myth intertwines with reality and fantastical beings tempt fate and fortune. With a new mechanic and roster, each path, decision, and encounter will paint your journey. Hey Tacticians, I'm Riot Blue Cove, a gameplay designer who's most proud of my work across the legendary units of this set and sets past, Mecha Leona. And I'm Sloan, the gameplay designer behind the set mechanic you're about to encounter. We're so excited to welcome you to our new set, Inkborn Fables. In the world of Inkborn Fables, brushes with fate and mythical creatures are inevitable. So we created Encounters, a new mechanic that brings the thematic to life. At various points in each game, you'll have chance encounters with legendary beings. They can be just for fun or literally game-ending. Some encounters have a small impact on your game. If Alawi shows up, she'll grant you some free rerolls. Encounters set and all tacticians get way bigger, <laughs> then shrink down a bit with no gameplay effect. Why, you ask? Well, Set's just passionate about bulk and cut cycles, and sometimes it's fun to have a more normal game of TFT. Then there are the game-changing encounters. Cho'gath, for example, gives players a choice. Feed the beast and permanently sacrifice a shop slot in exchange for a reward, or play it safe and keep your shop fully intact. Oh, oh, I've got to talk about this next one, which comes from some very loud player feedback. Fishing minigame enthusiasts, we see you. When you meet Tom Kench, you'll want to stand in puddles to collect fish for the River King. The more fish you collect, the more loot everyone gets. And then there's the Kane encounter. If Kane appears, he'll announce his return on a predetermined stage. When he returns, he ends the game. Whether you're first or eighth when that time comes, your fate will stand. Encounters will show up in a variety of ways and will impact all players equally. Over the course of the set, you'll have the chance to see more than 70 unique encounters but expect some of the spicier ones to be more rare. Now let's talk about some of the traits you'll discover in Inkborn Fables. First up, Exalted. If you love adapting on the fly, you'll love Exalted. In each game that you play, a new subset of champions will be given the trait, creating novel opportunities. This trait buffs Exalted champions and their adjacent allies, so you can play it as a vertical or splash it into other comps for support. That flexibility is vital because you'll be building dramatically different comps each game as the Exalted roster changes. Next, there's Mythic. Mythic units gain a bunch of stats. After four combats, these myths become canonical. They just double their bonus stats. Huey, League's sad lad artist, will make his debut as a five-cost Mythic. His artist trait lets him paint duplicate copies of your benched units. We're also revisiting a fan favorite, Fortune. So get ready to bring out the thumbnails. But Fortune is especially exciting this time around because for the first time ever in TFT, we're introducing a new character to Rune Terra. Our new tank Yordle is an absolute unit. Well, by Yordle standards, because he's only about four feet tall. This fluffy fellow will join the ranks of tanky Yordles, AKA just Poppy. Despite being a one cost, he scales nicely into the late game because the more interest you earn, the more permanent health he gains. Okay, now I've got to share my favorites. First up, Faded. Bond two units together and you'll make them stronger. Now, Kith. Speaking of favorite couples, there's two, uh, one more unit I want to call out, Zion Rakan, who enter the set as a single five cost via their unique trait, Lovers. The trait allows you to swap which lover takes to the battlefield based upon where you place them. Each lovebird has their own ability that will also tag in their offboard partner for support. Ready to build your own hero? Story Weaver champs create a build your own summon in the form of Kale. As you write her legend through reaching trait breakpoints, you'll have the ability to empower her spell, grant her new passive, or even see her ascend. Now we'll pass it over to this set's engineering lead to give you more info on the five costs for Storyweaver that required all new tech to live up to her Blade Dancer moniker. Hey everyone, I'm Anurag, the engineering lead of Inkborn Fables who led the tech for Irelia. And I'm here with Winston, the gameplay product lead for this set. Hey everybody, 
Usually when we make a champion in TFT, we have plenty of examples to draw from in League or previous sets for the tech. This was the first time where we had to build the tech for a champion from the ground up because the concept was just so unique. When I first saw this, I thought it was her ability, but it's actually just her auto attack. Engineering is at the core of making games. Designers and artists can dream up the wildest things, but it always falls to engineers to figure out how to actually build them. So when design wanted to bring Aurelia's legendary blade dancing abilities into the game, we went to Honorog and said, design wants to do something impossible. So in a real way, we went to engineering to see if we could make the blade dancers' blades truly dance. We wanted Irelia's missiles to weave smoothly from target to target. At the time, this was impossible. It was hard for us to create missiles with smooth paths that were more complicated than an S-shape. We solved this issue by using a combination of Hermite splines. These are basically equations that tell a missile how to move in a specified shape from point A to point B, while making adjustments for the chaos that is a fight in TFT. So basically, whenever Irelia hits a target, she decides what the next target should be and how intensely the missile should turn to the next enemy. Then after she hits them, she repeats the process. And things like this unlock new possibilities for the future of TFT. Inkborn Fables is a prime example of how we're trying to push the boundaries of TFT as a major player within League Tech and the Runeterra universe. Our new Tank Yordle unit is of course another example of this. But there's even more we've been working on. Balloon, who you know as Ophelios' twin sister, has always been the disembodied voice and never the independent lunar being. Well, now she's making an appearance of her own, so she can blast her enemies with lunar energy. Inkborn Fables is the most content-heavy set we've ever created, thanks to the efforts of all of our teams working in harmony, including QA, art, engineering, design, and many, many more. But these teams aren't the only ones cooking up new content and experiences for you. Hey, Alex, can you paint us a picture of what you folks on cosmetics have been working on? Hey, tacticians, I'm Alex, a product manager for cosmetics on TFT. With Inkboard Fables, we're introducing a new way for you to get chibis, little legends, arenas, and more, with a focus on eliminating some of the randomness you see in treasure realms today. Coming midway through this set, our rotating shop will offer a seasonal selection of in-game content you can buy with a new currency. You'll get this currency through passes, treasure realms, and events, regardless if you're a free-to-play player or mythic content enthusiast. This currency will be used in their rotating shop, where we'll have a changing selection of content, both old and new. And if you don't see anything you like during one shop rotation, you can save it for something in the future. It's about choosing the content you want. The overall goal of this update is to increase agency in how you choose to approach collection. So we're making a couple of additional changes. With the addition of rotating shop currency to treasure realms, we're reducing the drop rate of mythic content, but also reducing the price of each treasure realm pull along with it. We'll also be adding a milestone reward track, similar to League's masterwork chests. These changes will result in less investment for each individual pull, more rewards along the way, and more control over acquiring the content you want. That's it for me. Look forward to more info on the rotating shop as we get closer to its release. Thanks for supporting TFT, whether you're still repping River Sprite or flaunting your finisher at the end of a fight. Now I'll pass it over to Mariah in our Singapore office to talk about some of the new stylish content coming in this set. Hello everyone, Mariah, one of the producers for cosmetics on TFT here and I'm honored to share what the team's been working on for Inkborn Fables. First, let's get Chibi-fied. With the set's release, we're introducing Chibi Morgana and her spell-binding mythic variant, Chibi Majestic Empress Morgana. Wow, that's a cool look. Also, during our release patch is a new mythic variant of a fan-favorite Chibi. Chibi Spirit Blossom Ari is the perfect chibi to guide your foes to the afterlife. But new chibis aren't the only thing in store for Inkborn Fables. Handan is a new species of little legend that's never made a mean face. Well, they've never really made a face at all. And finally, our Heaven Celestial Court Arena. Koi ponds do make the perfect place to relax. 
even if that pond tends to transition into a spirit realm with glowing fish circling the court. With that, let's see how you can embark on your own journey in the mythical realm of eSports. Hey Tacticians, I'm Michael Sherman, lead for TFT eSports. Since our last dev drop, we've had a few major events. So let me start off by saying a huge thank you to everyone who came out to Vegas for the first TFT Open. Congrats to Malala, who took home our first ever Tactician's Belt. It was such an incredible weekend, and I can't wait for our next Open at the end of this year. On top of that, we just crowned our Remix Rumble champion this weekend. We're filming this before said championship, so whoever ends up winning, congrats. I thought you were the favorite the whole time, no cap. Now, let's turn our eyes to how we're improving future competition. Over the years, we've opened our tournament circuits to nine regions around the world, but that resulted in nine unique regional formats that are hard to follow and know how to get involved. We've also heard that competitors feel like they're playing in qualifiers for qualifiers, and the seeds that set championships don't represent regional strength. So, starting with Inkborn Fables, our regional cups will be shifting to a pan-regional model built around EMEA, APAC, the Americas, and CN. This allows us to simplify formats around the world. This way, competitors can better represent their servers, build new rivalries or friendships, and take advantage of TFT's unique ability to compete cross-regionally without lag being an issue. These pan-regional tournaments will also become the new path for players to earn a spot into set championships. Expect an update from the esports team with all the particulars soon. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever cheered for their favorite TFT player during Remix Rumble, and welcome you to Inkborn Fables. <laughs>